offer greetings on behalf of the Armenian National Committee of America. <laughs> Dennis, this is a tribute to you, the first part. Denial, denial, denial. <laughs> Whenever and wherever we speak of the Turkish government's campaign of denial, our thoughts naturally turn to the denial of the truth and rewriting of history. This is true, of course, but they represent the beginning, the very beginning, and certainly not the end of the process of denial. For denial represents far more than a challenge to our past, far more. Denial is not simply an affront to our identity, an insult to our martyrs, and an offense against history, no. The price of denial is far greater. We must understand that the stakes are far, far higher. Far higher because at the heart of the denial of history is the denial of a crime and the obstruction of justice owed to the Armenian people. This denial represents an ongoing threat to the Armenian Republic. Denial represents a challenge to the security, the very future of the Armenian nation. Uh, Armenia cannot today be safe while the Turkish Republic remains on her border as an unrepentant, antagonistic, and overarmed denier state. Anyone who fails to grasp this chilling reality need only listen to the words of the late Turgut Özgal, who threatened to teach the Armenians the lessons of 1915 again, or of Erdogan, who only a few weeks ago warned of renewed deportations of Armenians from Turkey. And just as surely as Anna represents a direct threat to our Armenians today, so too does the denial of justice represent a threat to the future of all Armenians. The core element of Armenian viability stolen through genocide must be restored. The very demographic, geographic, economic, cultural, agricultural, water, transportation, defense, and other pillars of Armenia's survival over the course of more than 4,000 years. In making the case for restoration and reparations, we are contrary to the protests of Turkey firmly within the mainstream of essentially every legal and judicial tradition on our planet. Wrongs should be righted, the fruits of crime returned, victims made whole and protected from new, renewed violence. We ask for nothing more and will accept nothing less. We demand... We demand very simply for the restoration and reparations that represent the basic requirements of Armenia's viability. And so ending denial in all its forms represents a vital key, an indispensable element of Armenia's future security, of Armenia's very place at the table of nations. So where do we stand today in our struggle against denial? Our progress in this struggle, the High Tad movement, has been marked by our ability to force three major retreats by Turkey over the past several decades. We have, as a nation, overtaken Ankara's first three lines of defense, silence, lies, and threats. We face today its fourth, the protocols. How did we reach this point? First, we overcame Turkey's silence, its first line of defense, a strategy that worked for the better part of the first five decades after the genocide, through the rebirth in 1965 of activism and protests. Next, we overcame Turkey's lies, its second line of defense, by fostering the growth of an academic consensus that has fatally undermined, in any serious setting, Ankara's ability to rewrite the history of the Armenian Genocide and the truth of its reality. And then we overcame Turkey's threats, its third line of defense, in part through our own growing political power over the past two decades, but also as a result of Ankara's loss of, the, of leverage over US decision makers due to its increasingly independent policies on Israel, Iran, and the region. As these lines of defense have collapsed, Turkey has fallen back to a fourth line of defense, the protocols. Instead of remaining silent, outright lying, or leveling threats, Ankara is today forced to make the shaky case that an American moral stand along the lines of President Obama's repeated pledges would somehow harm Turkey-Armenia relations. It's their same strategy of denial, but using a different and desperate tactic. We saw this on full display on March 4th during the consideration of the Armenian Genocide Resolution before the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee. The primary argument, particularly by those who moved from support to opposition, was all about the protocols. This same dynamic is driving the President's abandonment of his pledge to recognize the Armenian Genocide. Viewed in this light, the protocols are not a sign of Armenian weakness, but rather proof that the enemies of truth are forced to devote even more resources to match our growing political strength. 
They are not a marker of Turkish success, but instead a symbol of their three successive failures to bury the Armenian cause. And so for us today, overcoming these agreements, unfortunately signed but recently placed on hold by President Sarkisyan, represents an important front in our struggle for Armenia's future. I'm just going to skip to the end because Mary is breathing down my shoulder. <laughs> it's, uh, it's clear that the very viability of Turkey's denial strategy is today rightfully under attack from all sides. Its foundations are failing. The wall of lies it has built has started to crumble. We will in the end overcome these protocols as well and defeat Turkey's last line of defense against the truth, justice and security or own to the Armenian nation. Now is the moment for all Armenian Americans to work as a team in pressing our advantage and breaking down the last barriers to U.S. recognition by the, both the U.S. Congress and President Obama. Now is the time for each of you to reconfirm your commitment to increase your activism and to energize those around you, for together we shall meet the challenges of our time and build a brighter, safer future for the Armenian nation. If we stand firm, truth and most importantly, justice will prevail. Thank you.